Let's go to Senator James McGrath now. He's an LNP senator for Queensland. He's run campaigns in the Australian states, uh, been involved in federal campaigns. He's been involved in political campaigns in the UK too. James, look, I know this is your opponent, but have you ever seen anybody, any opposition leader in particular, have such a bad first full day's campaign? Oh, he's had a shocker, but what it is, it, it's a spotlight into the failure that is Anthony Albanese as a politician. This guy's never held a serious economic portfolio. He's never held a national security portfolio. And when he's asked a question about what is the unemployment rate, this is something that is that is tattooed on, on the back of our eyelids because we're all about fighting for jobs... This guy doesn't know the answer. So he either had a brain fade or he's incompetent. Either way, be very, very afraid, Australia. We're, we're 41 sleeps away from possibly waking up with this guy, this guy being Prime Minister. No way. Uh, this is a wake-up call to Australia to see how incompetent and incapable this guy is. Yeah, I just find it quite incredible that he would not know those numbers. Uh, people are talking about cheat sheets and the like. Well, normally people do that for, for petrol prices and the loaf of bread because politicians might not actually be shopping very often. And they need... But these are the fundamental numbers that, that underline the whole economic debate. In fact, his own promises. He's promising to get wages higher. Well, the key driver to get wages higher is the unemployment rate. And we're all talking about the probability of interest rate rises and, and, uh, and inflation. And so, therefore, your cash rate becomes absolutely central. How would you go on some of these numbers? Can you tell us what the current inflation rate is? Uh, it's 3.5%. Uh, and, and what about the deficit we're looking at this year? Oh, it's going to, it's going to be uh, a, a pretty, pretty bad one. We've improved it by, um, I think, $170, million, $170 billion. Uh, one thing that keeps me up awake at night, of course, is, is our debt level. Uh, and yeah, that's what about why we have a strong economic plan. To... What's the, what deficit are we looking for in the uh, current budget? Uh, I think it's... Oh, I'm going to have to give a pass on that one. Well, there you go. I think it's $80 billion, isn't it, this year? Yeah. But um, yeah. let's. I, I want to go to something else. But this is the point. You're not running to be treasurer, but these are some pretty basic numbers we need to, our politicians to be across. I want to go to some numbers you're probably not going to want to talk about, but please be, bear with me and give me some, some sort of reaction. I want to start off with the latest news poll that came out today, which would have been bad news, worrying news for Labor enough, but to Anthony Albanese, is sort of, uh, his story has run over the top of that. Let's look at the primary vote first. And Labor's votes only come down 1%. But on the back of 3% in a poll a week ago, they've dropped 4% in their primary vote in the last week or last fortnight, really. Coalition way too low at 36%. They'll be wanting to improve on that. But if you go to two-party preferred, you see another narrowing. It was 45-55 just three polls ago. Now it's 47-53. And if you can just look at the map now, uh, the graph, if you like, showing how these polls have converged, they're a long way apart they are now narrowing together on two-party preferred. The trend is your friend. Now, as a campaigner, James McGrath, you'd be most excited about that trend, wouldn't you? Uh, the trouble is, you're speaking to, to a pessimist here in terms of, 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 of my, my reading of polls, and most campaign directors are, are pessimists. Uh, yes, the, the trend is your friend, but if an election was held today there would be a Labor Green government. And the challenge for me and my colleagues and Scott Morrison is to make sure that we go forth talking about our, our plan for Australia and highlighting Labor's failure to have a plan to, to, to build the economy. Uh, there are, you know, you know, six weeks or so until we'll know what's, what's happened with, with the election day. Yes, the trend is our friend, but the polls will go up and down between now and polling day and it will send politicians in all sorts of lathers in terms of what's happening with sure, that. No, but that, the main sure thing they, is sure for they, us. Yeah. We, we hear that sort of thing a lot, but obviously what's happening is there is mm. a tightening. Uh, voters are coming off the Labor Party, some of them being parked with the minor parties and independents. Um, the Liberal Party vote is going up, not as quickly, but it has been moving upwards. What you've got to do is just continue the momentum you've got now for another six weeks, right? You don't need a dramatic change. You need to continue the path you're on when it comes to polling. What was really interesting about today, and I was watching the, the, the different press conferences between the PM and Albanese and putting Albanese's total car crash aside, 
The PM has got his mojo back. It is really, really good to see that, that, that the Scott Morrison, who has been dealing with the crisis for the last two, two years of, of COVID, has got his mojo back and is back on the campaign trail. And that is going to send such a strong message to our supporters and our base to e energise them. Whereas Albanese, his performance today is going to send a message to his base that he may not be actually up for the job. And you've got to remember, both these guys are running for, to be Prime Minister of this country. Albanese looks like he's running to be, uh, uh, you know, a delegate for the CFMEU, you know, he's, and, and that is going to send a message to middle Australia. Uh, so it, it is all to play for, uh, and one thing for everyone should remember is there are also, it's actually 151 contests across the country. Yep, every and whether seat it's Julian is different. Julian Simmons and Ryan or Trevor yep. Evans, every well, seat is going, going to be different, and, and that's where I think we've got a competitive advantage because our candidates and MPs, quite frankly, are a lot better than the mob on the other side.